Xbox Game Pass is truly the Netflix of gaming with the ability to play anytime, anywhere, on any device with a large library of games to play from for all for one low price. But it didn't get here without failing and boy did it fail very hard to get there when you look back at a service call Games for Windows Live. Originally launched in 2007, Games for Windows Live was supposed to be bringing the best features of Xbox Live that we saw on consoles over to the PC. And that would be things like online multiplayer, matchmaking, leaderboards, achievements. You were able to do chats with friends, voice chats. You were gonna have crossplay between PC and Xbox owners. There was eventually gonna be a marketplace that would be available to download games, DLC, trailers, demos, things like that. And they were gonna make this free for current Xbox Live owners. So if you had a PC and you had an Xbox, you'd be able to use this for free and have everything sync between all of it. But if you were just a PC gamer, it was gonna to cost you 50 bucks to be able to do this and you can already tell the problems from that immediately having pc gamers pay for these features that were basically free for pc gaming forever was absolutely unheard of on that platform it was very very unpopular there was also no client for windows live for games or games for windows live because you actually had to launch the game first and then within the game, Games for Windows Live would launch up into this very clunky interface that necessarily wasn't the easiest to navigate around. It was definitely made probably for more consoles in mind because they probably expected a lot of PC gamers to just go and pick up an Xbox 360 controller and play with that because that was one of the requirements for a game to be certified as Games for Windows Live was to have Xbox 360 controller support. There was also a lot of problems with corrupt game saves as well too that really plagued it along with other bugs, crashes, things that would just be so bad you almost made some games unplayable. You also had that crossplay thing really only launched with about two games that I remember from and it really wasn't popular when they kind of had that. So you can see there were a litany of issues here with this and gamers pretty much revolted. Anything that you heard with terms of games for Windows Live was pretty much meant with a sigh and a why every time you heard it announced but Microsoft did try to fix things. Eventually, PC gamers did get those common features that were free on PC gaming, free on games with Games for Windows Live. Just made a whole lot of sense there. They did try to update the interface and the marketplace to be not so barren, not to be so clunky, and try to make those things a little bit better. But pretty much the one big fix that they did was in 2011, announced Xbox Live for Windows 8. And of course that put into question how long would games for Windows Live last? Microsoft did promise that they would keep support for it, but I think everybody knew what was kind of going on here and the writing was clearly on the wall, which led us to where we're getting development of what we now know as the Xbox Game Pass app. And where that started was very interesting. Now the Xbox Game Pass app that we know today actually started off as Xbox 360 Smart Glass or Xbox One Smart Glass, depending upon what console that you had it on. This was sort of a really cool second screen experience. What this allowed was games that supported it to give some additional features like a map or something like additional interactions if you're using a Windows 8 tablet and the app at the same time. I remember using this with Dead Rising and it was a pretty cool thing to have, really nice, but you could tell quite clearly that Really cool, works well in execution, but probably not gonna be used by a whole lot of people. And I think Microsoft saw that as well too. So they eventually evolved the app by removing all the smart glass features and sort of made it this interface that could manage your PC games and also could manage your Xbox as well too. And then eventually they involved the store back in 2019 into what we see right now, which Xbox Game Pass, which is a much better iteration all the things that Microsoft was trying to do way back when with Games for Windows Live. And this modern app has all the features that you would expect with the ability to purchase and download hundreds of games. You're able to stream games directly from it as well. You're able to manage your friends list. You see your achievements, leaderboards, chat and voice features. All that stuff is now built into the app right here. And it's what Microsoft, like I said before, was envisioning a long time ago, but the remnants of a long time ago still plague a lot of games to this day, even up to now. While Microsoft officially ended support for Games on Windows Live back in 2014, it wasn't like this was a separate client. This was integrated into games. So as those services were shutting down, it was basically making games that had the service integrated into it 
unplayable. And it was on the developers to update their games, removing games from Windows Live from it to allow gamers who have already purchased these games to continue playing these games. It has been something that's still plaguing all the way up until now. There's still games that have these issues and developers are, that are updating the games to remove this service. And there's a giant list of games that are basically unplayable even if you bought it already and you're unable to do anything with it because it has games for Windows Live services integrated into it. This puts into question a lot about game preservation. It's something that is definitely a knock against Microsoft in terms of this. But we cannot deny the success of Xbox Game Pass. 25 million subscribers reportedly here with and enjoying the services here. And I quite honestly, I would say it saved the Xbox brand because in this video that will replace this recommended video here, I go more in depth about that and talk about how Microsoft almost killed off their entire Xbox brand with one release.